It was an ebook, though. It was a PDF of like. It was talking about. It was called Vanishing Acts, and it was talking about maybe. Did I already tell you about this? Like no. the way. So like. The way that as we become more accustomed to screens, they vanish in our in our separation of them from reality. In in which already has occurred in the, in the industrial age. In the sense that these cars have performed have sort of consummated this vanishing act in mm. the sense that we view them as part of the ambience, we accept them wholly, like they're not interesting or in the sense of being disparate from our general surroundings. Yeah, yeah. And like the implications of that on our just like our perception of reality essentially. Like this, we're so accustomed to these screens, even though they are simulation in a sense. Mm. But like they are simulation in a sense, but they've reached this point of fluidity with uh, yeah. self-perception, perception of others, perception of culture through media. It's really interesting. I only started, I only just started reading it, but um, yeah, it's good. I should maybe send it to you. Yeah, like you never, but you sort of never really, I don't know if we've ever really thought about the screen. I think we because, have but the screen Because the screen always has something on it. Like it's always, like the screen sort of never exists. It's always just the... What's but, on it? Like when we found Periscope, for instance, we, there was like an excitement to it. But now we've normalized. Like, I think that just with any any new interface, it's like interesting initially. I mean, like definitely when I got the iPhone, like when I hadn't had a, a phone that was that functional in producing personal media, like I started recording heaps of shit, like on the because I could do that. Like mm. it hadn't vanished yet because it was still this kind of. But like now that's so fluid with my day to day life. But is it the screen itself? It's the interface. It's like this. Yeah. As, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it is. I think, yeah. I guess it's uh, just like general customization, but I guess it was like the implications of also like we're used to constant change as well. Like when, like every update, you know, like we're used to apps being updated, so whole software is being updated. We're even used to like, you know, a lot of people are used to a phone just dying after two years getting a new phone anyway. So like we're, we're less and less. Critical. Well, like we're, we're we're aware of change, but it becomes less and less important. And that's also an interesting implication. It's just like fluid. Um, even even if the interface itself is constantly changing, we're sort of just like we just roll with it because we're really used to it. We're accustomed to that, and that has a lot of implications in terms of just the way we use these things. Do you think like um, with like drastic technology change? It kind of takes like almost like a new like a generation. Like humans are, are sort of never really ready. Oh, wait, I mean they. I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. The sense of being ready for new technology doesn't like humans are never ready for the next thing. It's like about like a generation coming in and growing up within that, and then that's the new. That's when humans are ready. Like it's yeah. you need you need to have the technology there before the readiness, like for yeah. it. Yeah, like as in there's always an adjustment. Period. Yeah, I don't know. I was thinking. Well, I mean, I was back to kind of artificial intelligence. I was thinking. I was talking to someone who was like, I mean, and it's true. And like, you know, it's sort of to the level that I was kind of talking about. It. Yeah, I guess it's hard to imagine anyone ever being ready. But I was arguing that it all it takes is the normalization of it within, like, you know, someone growing up in that reality for it to just be. For that, yeah, you know, then they're ready, or like as ready, you know, yeah, that's that's max ready. Yeah. <laughs> for there are already people who are like 11, and they have they're present on social media, like they're fully integrated into that as a system, as a social system, and as a self-reflective system, as a way of viewing yourself and others. Yeah. As a way of interacting with others, as a way of posting personal media, like even just you know having a personal media device, like in a way that you didn't, in a way that we didn't. Really even like getting my iPod, you know, was a huge step. Like when I was in year six, like getting an iPod and being able to then like even just that, even that what now seems like such a piss weak level of curation, like even that was like a huge step in, in like forming mm. my relationship with the world, with music, and like my perception of consuming music, like the rate at which we can consume music. I also do like lime wired hips of songs, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. like that has an impact as well. Yeah, you know? like that's that j- that preps me for norm for free content, which is incredibly like you know, sound cloud, bandcamp, YouTube, whatever, YouTube. like, we, we're just so geared up for free content. Whereas, like, to people of my parents' generation, it seems like, it's still incredible, like, well, like, my mum will talk about it, especially, like, if she's, like, tutoring a youth orchestra or something, and she'll be like, 
man, like when I was younger, if I was playing this piece and I needed a recording of it, like my, my dad would have to look everywhere for a record for it. But now it's like you can listen to this shit and you can prepare and you can understand like stylistically where we're coming from, like you know, historically you can research what was going on in the world. You know, like it's yeah. because to her it is a shift. But to us we're just like people won't do that because they they're probably looking at other shit on YouTube. They're probably looking at other shit on the internet. Like that. But like, I mean, do people actually? Do you have? Do people notice the shift? Uh, when it, I mean, the, the shift. I don't know. It's it's sort of less of a shift. I feel, and more just sort of like a. It's like a sudden. You just kind of like maybe wake up to it one day. I mean, or oh, you never you never feel the. But she's noticed the shift because she's witnessed the transition. But we've witnessed transitions. We've been, witnessed yeah, pretty drastic things, transitions, but, but like things. not. Wit- I wouldn't even say I've witnessed it. It's sort of just like. I mean, it's only, yeah, you kind of don't. It happens at a rate, which is... We have witnessed it. I mean, like, when I look at... But, you know, you never feel like you're witnessing it because, like, when you find out something, it's always like, oh, right, wait, so that's actually been about for, like, a year now. Oh, okay. Or, like, like, you know, it's it's sort of... But the fact that she's, like, almost 60 as well, like, she has a different conception of time to us because she's that much older. She's witnessed that much more kind of, like, fads that come and go and things. But she's witnessed the tra- like the long, 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 long transition into like this this edge. 